Look at the paperwork and you probably wouldn't expect much from Suzuki's new for 2021 GSXS 1000. I know I didn't. There's nothing revolutionary about it. The inline four cylinder engine's been updated, but it's not been replaced. And it now makes a smidge more power. Brake horsepower is up from 145.3 to 148. Peak torque is actually down a touch from 108 Newton meters to 106, though it does reach that peak 250 RPM earlier. Most of the changes are listed by Suzuki as updates, really. So it just shows they've slightly changed what was there already. But this bike feels a hell of a lot different to what's gone before. The only GSXS 1000 I've ridden was back in 2015, soon after it came out for the first time. That bike felt a bit flabby and a bit snappy to me. At one point, I wondered if someone had taken the back wheel out and nicked the cush drive rubbers. That's how much lash it seemed to generate at the back wheel on the first crack of the throttle but this bike feels a big step on from that first one. This bike feels like a thoroughly modern, sporty, naked bike. It's perky and it's crisp in both throttle response and chassis handling. There are loads of new electronics that help with this. It has a ride-by-wire throttle now, so there are three riding modes that let you tailor the response to your mood or to the conditions. Traction control also keeps an eye, so you can relax a bit more when you're opening the throttle without worrying that the bike's gonna get out of line. An up and down quick shifter makes changes much more fun and also more responsive. Even the updates that are only there to make the bike get through the latest emission rules haven't ruined the noise as it inhales a huge gulp of air, mixes it with fuel and sends you off up the road in double quick time. I've had this bike for a couple of weeks and I've really enjoyed having it. We've used it to review a load of sporty road kit and it's been absolutely great. As for the GSXS's competition here in 2021, it's been a while since I rode any of its rivals, but I do remember things were getting pretty frenetic in the super naked class when I stopped road testing a few years ago. Now there seem to be two divisions in that category. KTM, Ducati, Kawasaki and Triumph, their super nakeds have much bigger power figures than this bike, but also cost considerably more than the 11 grand you'd have to stump for this one. Then there's this bike that's playing a similar game to Yamaha's very characterful MT10, BMW's S1000R, and Honda's CB1000R. The Suzuki's cheaper than all of them, and I'd definitely say it's worth trying one if you want a sporty street bike which has the sort of performance that you can exploit on the road, rather than the sort of performance that's likely to exploit you.